When it comes to cooking meals, drying clothes, heating water, and my home, nothing beats natural gas from Centerpoint Energy. It's my most affordable energy option. It costs less to use than electricity, propane, and heating oil. So if you already have natural gas, keep it. If you're replacing an appliance, choose it. Natural gas, your best choice. Safe and affordable, rest assured. For more on the benefits of a natural gas home, visit centerpointenergy.com slash natural gas benefits. Centerpoint Energy. Always there. Right, we are now joined by head coach Jimbo Fisher. We'll begin with an opening statement from coach, and then we'll move on to questions. Whenever you're ready, coach. Uh, you know, first of all, uh, played a good team in South Carolina. That team's been physical and playing a lot of really good football. And, and just congratulations to our team and how we played. Uh, I thought the key tonight. Well, coach, you're still muted on the Zoom. I'm not running that show. Yeah. Good. <laughs> All right, there we go. Can now you hear can me? Hear yes, Again, sir. first of all, saying South Carolina's played some really good football this year, and they have a great team, uh, very physical up front on both sides. And uh, I think that's the key to the game tonight. Our offense and defensive lines came to play. We were able to shut the run down on defense, kept them in long situations, which helped on our third down conversion. Our defense is outstanding on third down, getting off the field. Offensively, being able to run the football, uh, it was very tough going sledding early. We kept pounding and pounding and pounding. Uh, and then, we, then Kellen kept making the play action passes and the plays with his legs and his feet and his reads and did a good job. But I think the key was up front. Uh, very proud of our team. Very sound. Great on third down. They, we were 3 of 14. They were, to our defense, got out the field. On offense, we were 12 of 16. I know the first three, three touchdowns in the first half were all third down conversions in the red zone. That's the difference of 21 nothing to 9 nothing. That was huge. Our players, everybody executing down there in those moments. Great balance, run pass. Red zone, we were 5 out of 5 touchdowns. Scoring touchdowns in the red zone is huge and not kicking field goals. And on defense, our guys keeping them out of there. And special teams are very good. Nick punted the ball very well. We kicked off good. Had one little squib there, but uh, you know, did a nice job sound across the board. So it's got to get ready, got to get healed up. Uh, got banged and bruised as this season goes and go play another long road trip at Tennessee next week. All right, our first question is from Travis Brown from the Bryant College Station Eagle. Hey, Coach. Uh, Isaiah Spiller obviously does a lot for you on third down and third and short yardages, but how important is he then to open up that play action pass game that seemed to be um, really effective on third down near in the red zone? Oh, it did. I mean, he, he's huge. I mean, when you, you he's the guy that everybody knows is going to get it, and we're going to tote it to him. We're going to give it to him, and uh, he carries it, and uh, just he's a big part of what we do, and also catching the ball out of the backfield. And then, Coach. Uh, just on his uh, his health uh, there at the end of the game? He's good. He could have came back in. He was ready to come back in. Uh, we just elected not to. You get banged and bruised, a little nicked up, and we had the game there, and we wanted to give a chain some work, and he was doing really well, so we just didn't put him in. He could have played if we wanted to. And then finally, the status of Damani Richardson. Uh, he was unavailable. And Damani, when we got after the Thursday test, he came up Friday morning. We got a thing. He was positive. He, came up, he was the one to come up positive for us, so he was out and uh, was not being able to be there. All right. Thanks, Coach. All right, our next question comes from Olin Buchanan from Tex Eggs. And then after that, we'll have John Wilson. Now, Jimbo, obviously the uh, complete game that y'all are looking for. Is there anything that you saw uh, coming up that, that made you maybe uh, anticipate that y'all could be this dominant tonight? Well, I mean, you always, you always think you can. You always hope you can. Uh, I think the poison of the guys and the players and the experience of our guys and our leadership on both sides of the ball allowed that to happen, and then they just continually keep pounding. And they're, they're trying to dominate each play, and I think that's how you end up dominating a game. You don't worry about the next play. You don't know what the result's going to be. You don't worry. You worry about winning your space that play and then go to the next play, and I think we're learning that, and in turn, you're seeing the big picture come together. All right, our next question comes from John Wilson from KBTX, and then we'll go to Robert Cessna. Coach, as difficult as it is to win in the SEC on the road, how impressed were you with your team tonight to be able to dominate for this game as long as you did? Well, I was very impressed. I was worried because we, like, we had a day lot yeah, short this week for practice week. because of the election, which is the right thing. I'm not saying that, but we had a day less. They had a week off. Preparation changes. You know, I was we didn't have a lot of time to – we could scheme it and do it, but not having, you know, getting the players to go out. We had a day less practice. I was worried. I mean, this place is always a tough place to play, and they're always physical. Will's a heck of a football coach, and uh, they always play us very good. And, and uh, But, uh, you know, oh, I'm sorry. But uh, just very proud of our guys being able to lock in and do it. All right, next up we have Robert Cessna from the Bryan College Station Eagle, and then we'll go to Jennifer Streeter. 
uh, yeah, Jimbo, when it was still a game there, they had the long run, and then Hansford had the big sack. I wonder, did he read that? Was that a called blitz, or what about that particular Read, play? I believe it was. It looked like to me they had a lock play. What I mean is they're locking the backside in, reading the backer on RPO. And one of the things that does happen, like if the backer does shoot and the lineman doesn't come down, it's an, it's an open run when you're RPO and you either got to give it off, get it out of your hand, or the tackle's got to come down. I believe that's what happened until I see the film. And, I, and if I'm not mistaken, it was just a quick, you know, the read of the play, which is where he should be, and you know, it came out. That's one of the things about RPOs that some things that can happen. I think that's what's right. I Don't hold me to that, but I believe that's what happened. And what about Hawker? I don't think he came back. What's, what's his status? Bang, but looked like he was back moving very well tonight. Look, he looks like he's been. We'll check him out, make sure, give him a few X-rays and things. But he looks like, uh, I mean, we think just a you know mild bang and bruise. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have Jennifer Streeter from the battalion, and then we'll go to Justin Woodard. Hey, coach. Congrats on the win. My question for you is: with getting to see King in the fourth quarter and with the score from H, and what do you think this game means and those plays meant for the future of AM and football? I did. You, I mean, you saw you saw a lot of the players. You saw of our young, all of our young backs in the game. You saw 22, 25, and 24 all out there carrying the ball. The uh, Max Wright, young guys there, the young offensive line. Layden came in, did a really nice job with the ones on a big touchdown drive. Layden Robinson, who I think is going to be one heck of a football player, I really do, uh, and where he's going. So I think all those young guys getting them on the field, that's the better. And we, I, th I love our young guys, and we, I, hopefully we can do a lot more of that. And then any thoughts on King specifically? Yeah, I mean, just, you know, when I, the way he managed the game, ran the clock down, kept the poise, told guys what to do. When he's playing quarterback, you see a guy who's very natural at what he does. And he seems that the, the moment doesn't seem too big. And I know it's at the end of a game that's saying a lot, but he always seems to be that way. And I, I think he's got a chance to be a heck of a player. Thank you. All right, next up, we have Justin Woodard from KX. Hey, Coach, uh, you go to the locker room up 21 nothing, right, and you come out and you still pound them and, and hit them with two more scores in the third and really create some more separation. How pleased are you with that aspect of, of the football team willing to put their foot down and put their throat on somebody? thing was big again. Our defense got a huge stop when they got down the red zone and got that loss, missed that field goal, and then we go score uh, not only the first drive of the second half, but the last drive of the first half. And we got 14 points before they could get their hands back on the ball. And I thought that was a huge turning point in the game. It was 14, that made it 21, that made it 28. And then we got the other one coming back. So that, and that makes you have to change on your side of the ball because you have, you're down four scores, you have to be more aggressive. We got a pick, and then we're able to convert that back to a touchdown. But I think those things were all critical in the game. Is that a learned behavior, Coach, of you're trying to get them to do that? No doubt about it, right? Yeah, you had to learn critical situations, how to, how to capitalize on those moments and what that means in momentum and to get up to those three scores. All right, next up, we have Sam Kong from ESPN. Jimbo, how valuable has Weidermeyer been to Kellen, and, and what, what makes him so good? I mean, first of all, he has all the tools. He's six foot five. he's 250, 55 pounds. He can run, he can catch, and he's now learning to be physical and a blocker. And now you can use him in different ways, and our run game is in uh, – the big part of it is our offensive line's gotten better, but he's gotten better too, and that's been a big part of our run game, being able to block and have that edge right there and be able to block those ends. He is a very talented young guy, and, uh, you know, I think the sky's the limit for him. Uh, no, last question from Travis Brown from the Bryan College Station Eagle. Yeah, Coach, a uh, quick follow-up, too, with uh, Keldrick starting today as a senior. Um, how pleased with, were you with what he was able to do, and, and how cool was it to be able to get that interception? With, I mean, with he went out there, stepped right in for Damani, played. He's always been playing, but he played great ball, moved guys around. Getting Eric Young back was huge for us tonight, too. I thought he was outstanding getting back out on the field. But Keldrick got that and got a big pick. Couldn't be happier. Keldrick's a class young man. Thanks, Coach. Y'all have, have a good evening. Time.